we've seen a plethora of unders uh, in the early stages or lately anyway in the NBA playoffs. And now they have adjusted to this line to 200. It was 204 in the last game. And, uh, you know, you look at the t last two results, both unders were saw in a Miami team that was absolutely anemic offensively in game three and game four after that terrific shooting game in game two. I think it's going to revert back to what we saw in the games in Boston uh, where we saw some really good three-point shooting from both teams. Uh, Boston shot less than 30% from the three-point line in games three and four. Um, I, I am going to go out on a limb and say that's not going to occur in game five at home. And you look at Boston's numbers in the first two games at home, they were 34 and 81 for 81, I should say, 42% from the three-point line in the first two games against Miami. Um, not only the great shooting percentage, but the volume of three-point shots, over 40 per game. And uh, contrarily, you look at Miami, uh, 35 out of 80. Of course, that's a little bit of skew because they did make 23 in uh, game two, um, and they shot 43.8% from three. Again, um, not so much the high shooting percentage, uh, but the fact that both teams are tempted each 40 or more free throw or three point attempts on average in the first two games of the series. Boston, by the way, 5 and 0 to the over at home this year when facing a team that scored 109 or less in their previous game. And when the total is 220 or less, 5 and 1 to the over in their last six off back to back unders, and 3 and 0 to the over in those situations if they were playing at home. And those three home games, a combined 239 plus scored. In all three, Boston's also five and zero oh over since last year after back-to-back -back covers of uh, when they're a favorite of nine and a half or greater, which they were in the last two games, and they covered the last two games. And Miami, who played a lot of overs going down the stretch, uh, and now has gone three and one to the under in this series, but they're five and one to the over in their last six when the totals two sixteen and a half or less, and they scored less than a hundred in their previous games. So uh, there's some in-season trends. I'm not a big trend guy when it comes to going back two, three years. But when you see some tendencies in teams and in-season trends like this, I take notice. But uh, more so, I just think this has been adjusted too low, this total. And uh, you're going to see some action on the under here just based on uh, Boston didn't really tear it up offensively either in the last two games. I think they scored 104 and. 106 or something like that, too. So I'm going to go over 200 in this game, guys. So Miami was held to below 85 each of the last two games. Yep. They won't have Jimmy Butler again. They won't have Jaime Yaquez today, a big loss for them. They still don't have Terry Rozier. You talked about these regular season numbers. That's not this Miami team. And Boston yep. has shown us three times in four games. Uh, one game Miami got hot from three, but Boston's been – you know, pretty strong defensively. What makes you think tonight's going to be different for Miami in terms of scoring points and bunches? Because if the Heat aren't competitive in the fourth quarter, this fourth quarter is going to be as slow as molasses. It's going to be a 26 to 12 fourth quarter, and the game's going to die because Boston's going to run clock. Um, so are you worried at all that Miami's key offensive players are basically you know, all out or most of them are out, you know, they got bam and absolutely. Zero, I mean, I, I, I'd be foolish and not in the position I am right now. If, if I wasn't uh, recognizing just what you said, and I don't mean that as no disrespect, Teddy. I also go back to game two, Jimmy Butler wasn't there and uh, Rozier wasn't there as well. And they did hit 23 threes in that game. Granted, uh, but they, you know, that game went over the total, I believe, and in in uh, Miami's production, I believe they scored 111 that game. I, I just, you know, here's the thing, too, Teddy. One thing I, I noticed with Boston, even the other night, and is a very disturbing trend that I saw them down the stretch of the regular season when they weren't quite as dominant as they were for the majority of the year, is complacency sets in a little bit with this club. And now with a 3-1 lead, playing at home uh, as a double-digit favorite, uh, you know, there's a very good chance that we'll see Boston become complacent. And they've shown a tendency to do so. 
And I think this is one of those spots. And that's why I really would be shunned away from laying this kind of number with the Celtics in this spot. Um, and I think the complacency when it sets in with Boston, it's more so on the defensive end of the floor than it is on the offensive end of the floor. So, again, you know, uh, we'll see. But uh, that that is a great question you asked me and great concerns. It's definitely a concern, but um, can't answer it better than that, Teddy.